if you're unconscious and you're out of your five senses, then you're dead. Isn't this contradictory? Your five senses make you conscious, but unconsciousness is death. Isn't this contradictory? Please explain. When you're out of your five senses, you are unconscious, but you're not in your five Christ senses. And when you're in your five Christ senses, you're out of those five human senses, and you're not unconscious, you're Christ conscious. In fact, that's exactly what we're coming to. Now, in the Old Testament, well, let's look at Matthew 25, 2, the virgins. Five of them were wise and five were foolish of the ten, see? See? And those who were wise were keeping their lamps oiled. Meaning, they were in contact with Christ within. The others were not. So they had five human senses. And the other five had five divine senses. And we who have five human senses are under the belief of mortality and when you have five divine senses you're in the knowledge of your present immortality. In Leviticus still in the old there's a funny statement and it's only explained when you understand about the five that are mortal senses and the five that are divine. This statement in Leviticus 26.8 Five of you shall chase an hundred and an hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight and your enemies shall fail before, fall before you by the sword. Five of you shall chase an hundred. The question was asked, how could that happen? They were revealing that once the five senses have been transcended and you're in the five divine senses they will chase a hundred of anything a hundred people a hundred problems you see it's the rebirth now you might ask yourself why should Christians have to be reborn or if you have to be reborn can you really say you're a Christian And then you find that Christianity was never meant to be a religion. That would be someone worshipping God. That would be Tunis. Christianity, in its pure truth, means a way, a state of being. You're a Christian when you know that you are Christ. You're not a Christian because you believe in something that is called a ritual or a dogma. Whoever is Christ is Christian. You can be a Buddhist and be a Christian. That is the meaning of Christianity in the message of Christ Jesus. Christianity is a state of being. And you cannot be a Christian in the five senses, for they are foolish. You must be a Christian in the five senses that are wise. This was so subtle that when they built the ark, listen to the funny kind of instructions Moses gave them. In Exodus, the 26th chapter, the third verse, you wouldn't understand this until you'd gone through all of the five virgins, the five and the five. Five curtains, this is how they made the curtains for the tabernacle. Five curtains shall be coupled together one to another, and another five curtains shall be coupled one to another. 
They're trying to show the difference between the five false senses and the new, five divine senses. In Luke, there was a dinner, a feast, and a ruler invited everyone to a wedding. They all said they couldn't come. One of them gave this reason. It was in the 14th chapter, 19th verse. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. And I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. Through his five senses, man cannot come to the feast of the Christ, the royal wedding within, the marriage, the union with God. We all have our five yoke of oxen. Do you see how symbolistic all of this is and why it's been buried to our human sense? Now here's one. David, you'll find in 1 Samuel there's something very akin to exactly what we're talking about. And this is the 17th chapter of 1 Samuel. David is about to go ahead and fight a, a Goliath. He does a very strange thing, which is not understandable until you get the symbolism of it. They put all this armor on him. Helmet of brass, coat of mail, and David girded his sword upon his armor and he essayed to go. For he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these. He refuses to go with his armor. For I have not proved them. And David put them off him. All of the physical protection that he needed against the giant, he didn't want. What did he want? And he took his staff in his hand and he chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. Now those five smooth stones are, is overcoming the five sense belief that there's power out there in a giant. Christ is within him. Christ is out there he is being faithful. He is overcoming as we must the belief that there is a separate self there and a separate self here. He is accepting that there is a divine essence and that we are all an expression of it undivided. And therefore, the spirit of me cannot fear the spirit of you. That was David's five smooth stones. We don't need any protection any more than David did, except that we living in our senses think we need protection. But our five smooth stones will be our Christ perception, which takes the place of sense perception and reveals that isn't Goliath. And this isn't even me. All that stands here revealed is the invisible spirit of God. And this is what all of these symbolistic fives are telling us. Get out of your five sense perception. Joseph had a famine in Egypt for five years. That was the five years in which he was coming out of his sense perception. To all of his brothers who came down he gave money. To one he didn't. To Benjamin, his younger brother, he gave five new changes of raiment. He taught him how to see beyond the limitation of the five senses so that his mind was wearing a new kind of raiment. The garment of the mind was changed as we are doing now. Now you remember the woman at the well of Samaria you have only you have had five husbands said Jesus to her she was quite surprised that he knew that he was telling her that she had been living out of her five senses she was married to her five senses but then she went a little further and he said and the sixth man that you're living with now is not your husband meaning 
this one this new way that has come a little higher than the five senses she has not yet been able to accept fully so she's not married to it she's still searching as we all are and he says but if you drink of the waters that I have you shall never thirst again his waters were Christ perception the mind that was in Christ Jesus sees the perfect reality and is able to live in it it is unconscious in the five senses but conscious in the five divine senses right here on earth as it is in heaven now you come to the hard part to put it into practice to get out of the five porches to find your five smooth stones because what has been revealed is the hypnosis of the human race within its five sense perception it has every defect you can name and one comes along who proves that there's nothing wrong out there it's in the eyes of the beholder get out of that porch get out of that defective vision get out of the belief in your five senses and so now you're being told something that's going to be very hard to take we must come to the realization that whatever we see whatever we comprehend or apprehend with our five senses is not real we must learn that whatever is taking place in our human minds is not happening and just to understand it will be nothing whatsoever you have to work with that because freedom from the five senses comes only when you know that whatever is happening in your five senses is not happening in God it is happening only in the world mind and in your individualized edition of that world mind whatever you see is not happening whatever you taste is not happening whatever you smell touch feel is not happening that's tough but as you begin to accept it you're coming out of the hypnosis of the senses yes all of the beautiful things seem to break your heart to know that they're not there but all of the evils are not there either because the good and the evil are part of the five sense world we inhabit they are the double eye not the single nothing that you can experience through your five senses is actually happening not the bad things nor the good things for all that you're experiencing with your five senses is your own thought just look at it this way you see a person how do you see that person your eye allegedly sees that person and if we accept science which says that that person becomes an image on your eye and then your brain recognizes the image and says person that moment of your brain recognizing an image is called thought So what are you seeing out there? You're seeing your thought. You taste an orange. How do you know it isn't a grapefruit? The same way your eye sees it and your brain says grapefruit or your tongue touches it and your brain says grapefruit or orange whatever it happens to be. Again, the identification of the object in your brain is always thought isn't that what we do all day long we identify the things around us and that identification of them is thought 
Every activity of the human brain is thought and you cannot see through the eye without the brain being a part of that activity. The brain sees. The brain is the thought which identifies what the eye is permitting to enter. And we go on that way in our five senses and everything that we experience every minute of the day is the thought in our brain about that experience. The experience is the thought itself. And it is all experienced through the thought which is a result of the activity of the five senses which cannot know God aright for God is spirit and can only be spiritually discerned. The five senses are the senses of the creature, the natural man who receiveth not the things of God. And these are your normal channels of knowing the world around you and making decisions based upon what you know. And yet, the one thing you cannot see or in any way experience with your five senses is the only thing that is there the Spirit of God. Every decision made on the basis of the five senses is made on the basis of false thought. You can see how false a thought is very easily. All you have to do is see any form of evil, any form of sickness, any form of error, And you, while you are witnessing it, are witnessing that which God did not create. What God did not create was not created. But you are witnessing it even though it wasn't created. If it was not created, can you possibly witness it? Or can you only think you are witnessing it? And that is the nature of the hypnosis. You witness what was not created and which, because it was not created, cannot be there. It exists in your thought. It exists in your neighbor's thought. It exists in everyone's thought because there is only one human mind individualized to appear as many. There is one cosmic universal mind that becomes your mind and my mind. It's as if there was one great big flute and we all play the same instrument. The reason we see things a little differently is because we play a little differently. You see through this one mind colored by your education, environment, heredity. Someone else sees through the one mind colored by their education, heredity and environment. Each of us alters that which we see through the one mind by our own backgrounds dating back to the beginning of time. And so we all look at the same world picture coloring it to suit our past personalities and our present one all looking out of one mind one counterfeit mind which is the five senses of each person. The God of this world is that counterfeit mind. And it knoweth not the things of God. So Jesus said to Peter, It's not what goes into your mouth that counts as what comes out. And he might have said, it's not what comes into your senses that counts, it's what comes out. Do you remember that there was a statement made in the loaves and fishes which we have never, never discussed? How many loaves and fishes do you have was the question and either Peter or Andrew replied 
we have five loaves and two fishes. Those five loaves represent the five sense human belief in limitation. Those five loaves, when the human belief in limitation or the five sense concept of man was pierced by Christ consciousness, fed 5,000. But that is a universal divine law now. All of us looking out with human eyes think in terms of five loaves when there's enough present to feed 5,000. Those five loaves were identical to the five porches. Human sense sees five loaves, the five senses see limitation and the other five senses, the divine senses see enough to feed five thousand be transformed by the renewing of the mind now if your faith in your own five senses has been undermined then you are making progress because this is where the difficulty lies to look out and see that beautiful child, that beautiful flower, to hear that wonderful concert, to see that exquisite forest, that beautiful babbling brook, and to say, what, that isn't real? That's just too much for the world. But that beautiful babbling brook is polluted tomorrow. Then you're willing to say it. That lovely child is reported to be a leukemia victim tomorrow. Then you're willing to say it isn't real. That forest is burnt to a crisp by a match. Or bulldozed for some cracker box houses. Then you're willing to say it wasn't real. The tree of good and evil shows us our sense of beauty and our sense of ugliness. But all we're looking at is our own thought. We're looking at our world thought individualized through each of us as the world thinker pipes through the flute of each one's mind. That world thinker is the same fellow, the Lord God, who said, now we've got this fellow Adam. If only we can keep him away from the tree of life so that he doesn't find life eternal. But he's lost us because we have found that tree of life and the fruit of it is life eternal. The fruit of it is immortality now, freedom from the hypnosis of the five senses. And to him who overcometh, he shall not be heard of the second death. That's the message from God infinite to God the Son in the midst of each of us. Whoever has the Son, says John, hath eternal life. Whoever realizes he is the Son discovers that the life of God is his only life. He is now divine life. And then he walks this earth refusing to be tempted by his senses into the belief that he is less than that divine life. His fidelity is to the life that he is and not to the form that appears. And he places his faith where his fidelity is, in the life, not in the form, knowing that his acceptance of the life is the protection for that which appears as the form. Now you must learn to practice. To look out and say, that's not a dog there. That's what my senses tell me. But God didn't make a dog. Or else that little fellow couldn't run under a car and be crushed. I can still enjoy that dog's company and even more so knowing the spirit of the God had dwells there. I can feel the miracle of that dog. I can see this world as 
invisible divine image made visible through the five senses. And instead of condemning what the five senses see in the errors and evils and ugliness around me, I can accept the divine image that underlies the very substance of the universe. For only that divine image is present here and now. Only the eyes of the Father are here. Only the life of the Father is here. There is no future life to be attained. There is no immortality to be attained. There is no human body that can be made into an immortal later. There is only the immortal life in here and now which we are. It must be practiced, though, not in the senses. You must step out of your thought into the Father's thought. And there's a beautiful way to do that. That's the meaning of let the Lord build your house. Let God's thought be your thought not by taking thought but by taking no thought let God do God's thinking in you you become the transparency for God's thought and then you're out of your senses you're out of your limited concepts for God's thoughts can be your thoughts for God's thoughts are the thoughts of Christ within you and God's thoughts are power. God's thoughts are substance. God's thoughts are the word, the law, the perfection, the expression of perfect ideas that express as harmony, truth, beauty, all ideas that never perish. And then the outer form is linked with the living word. Let God think in you by surrendering your thought. You become then a state of awareness, not a thinker, but one meek unto the divine thought, receptive, letting the infinite which is present as your own individual selfhood express through your conscious awareness. You're in the single eye. God is thinking and God's thought is the power that supersedes every pretense of power on this earth. When God is thinking through your conscious awareness the Lord is building your house. The power of the Father is moving through you in his will in his way becoming your flesh and the flesh of your complete experience on this span of earth. And only then is the infinite rhythm of God the rhythm of your being. Let his thoughts be your thoughts. Not by thinking, but by receiving them. Being consciously aware without conception on your part just aware that you are conscious not using your five senses but letting them wait as servants for the divine impulse through your awareness and that divine impulse will direct your senses to and into the proper channels God is now functioning God's perfect universe everywhere your five senses will not attest to that. And therefore you must ascend above those senses in a state of expectant, alert awareness. And let the Father identify the Father in that awareness. Let the Father reveal the Father. Let the Father define his universe where you stand. 
That is why it was revealed through Isaiah that my thoughts are not your thoughts until you have overcome the devil of the five senses, the five cosmic liars. Then my kingdom is expressed from your own withinness and the treasures of the kingdom pour forth to prove to you that wherever you have sown to the spirit by your silence of the senses you reap of the spirit you realize your joint heirship in Christ with every person on this earth now this must be practiced then that my senses will not fool me into bringing to me a universe that is not of God a very good rule to follow is God made nothing that can die nothing that can die was ever created by God and anything you can see that can die is not God's creation to that degree have our senses fooled us life is God and life begets life eternal life is God and it cannot beget anything perishable. It cannot beget this world. But it is where this world appears through the veil of the senses. And there is that force pushing us just like the chick out of the veil of the senses, ever lifting us into the perfect universe right here where God is functioning as the substance and the law of our being. You need accept no other power on this earth, for there is no other than the force of God, omnipresent, realized only when you have bypassed the falsity of the human senses which do not know God aright. In this state of just awareness, you'll find you're picking up things about 12 hours before they happen. You pick them up in the morning, and then by nighttime something will happen, and you'll see, oh, that's what I picked up this morning. You'll find that you are already being lifted into a different state of awareness. You're picking up things that would be impossible to pick up with a human mind. Instead, the spirit flows and defines itself, teaching you things you could know no other way. And then somehow, things manifest in your life in a more exalted and noble state for they have been ordained by the spirit which built your consciousness your house the harmony the beauty the unselfishness the trust the love the integrity all these things are flowing through your new state of awareness as divine thought making itself manifest in your everyday experience as abundance peace health love companionship new relationships in all things because it is divine thought which has the power <coughs> instead of human thought which is separated from the tree of life we are all divinity individualized and none of us is separated from the other because spirit is one continuous infinite substance life and law never make the mistake of letting your senses fool you into thinking 
that there is any separation in this infinite spiritual universe. And your acknowledgement of this will deepen your Christ awareness and will bring the power of the infinite through that newfound birth of Christ in you. The third letter to Pergamos we'll do next week. We have two phases then so far. We have a spiritual universe not a material one and we have infinite spiritual identity not material identity and this we must with integrity maintain in our consciousness regardless of what the senses make appear that was made clear when Jesus told his disciples, Inasmuch as you have done this unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. You must recognize that your senses will not tell you that the fellow in San Quentin is the Christ, or that the thief on the cross is the Christ, or that the executioner is the Christ. But there is no thief on the cross, there is no fellow in San Quentin, there is no executioner. There is only the one infinite indivisible spirit. Your conscious awareness of that will let 10,000 fall at your right and a thousand at your left, but it will not come nigh thy house, thy dwelling, thy consciousness, because the power is in the truth in your consciousness. We're moving toward the spiritual body which does not know the second death. And as someone said to me, this is Father's Day, but we'll look at it as our Heavenly Father's Day every day. Thank you very much.